particularly a Lutheran church. Hang on two seconds. Things work better when you have the speaker system on. Sorry about that. We usually have somebody that does that, but he's not here today, and the rest of us got busy doing other things and forgot about it. So, for announcements this morning, again, starting on July 3rd, next Sunday, church will be outdoors in the parking lot, and church will begin at 9.30. There is a multi-committee meeting on Wednesday, June 29th at 4 o'clock in the fellowship hall. All Gilead members are invited to attend Pastor Silvernail will be there, and we're going to start taking a look at things that we can do in the future and in the fall. Also, please make sure that you complete your surveys and get them back to us as soon as possible. If you have them in your email box, you can email them back to the church, bring them on a Sunday morning, or you may mail them. Someone just handed me a little note on my way up. Uh, a congratulations to Leonard Flath on becoming a grandfather. But we're not sure if it's a boy or a girl. No, he did the, I'm sorry, somebody just tell her that it was a girl. Are there any other announcements? Enjoy your worship. <laughs>
We need God. That's what makes Jesus' call to follow him a, an invitation. An invitation to freedom. This is the freedom to reveal in the Spirit's fruits love, joy, peace, and patience. This is the freedom to, be, to not be imprisoned by anything that would keep us from the fullness of of the life of God, life that God has given us. In essence, this is the path of life. So with gratitude, let us begin our worship with the need to confess our shortcomings and to seek God's forgiveness. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us, but if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you of all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. But let us share with each other a sign of that peace in whichever way you and the other person are comfortable doing so. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 455 in the Green Book, Come Follow Me, the Savior Speak. <laughs>
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Then the Lord said to him, 
Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall, shall anoint Haziel as king over Abram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel Mahola, as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah, Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. Here ends the reading. Psalm 16 on page 220. Now the works of flesh are obvious, 
sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Here ends the reading. activities 
well, we had to postpone or cancel them or move them to another day and move this back here and do that. Yeah, you get the idea. But readings today that we have remind me of that kind of spirit. It's the kind of spirit where we forge ahead, knowing that things are not always going to go the way we planned, or at least the way we hoped they would, or, or they or would face something that would rather not. But here's the thing. This is where trust comes into play. Our hope comes from the Lord. Or it doesn't. <laughs> Those are your choices. Simple as that. We as believers or non-believers make that choice. Free will if you have will. In the psalm we chanted earlier, the author of the psalm is quite certain where his trust is. Protect me, O God, I trust in you for safety. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. All good things I have come from you. And then the psalmist goes on to explain exactly just what that kind of trust entails. You, Lord, are all that I have. And you give me all I need. My future is in your hands. The Bible interpreter, Eugene Peterson, puts it this way. Keep me safe, O God. I'll, I've run for dear life to you. I say to God, be my Lord. Without you, nothing makes sense. And these God-chosen lives all around, what splendid friends they make. Don't go shopping for I swear I'll never treat God names like brand names. My choice is you, God. First, only. And now I find I'm your choice. It really sounds great. Problem is, some people. Gods are for sale. You want the shiny. You want the happy. They don't place their trust in the one true eternal God. Or maybe they did once upon a time. But when things got mm, about this rough, well, it's God's fault. So where do they place their trust now? Perhaps in material things of their choosing. You know, the gods that are for sale. And fill those, their lives with those things that they think will make them happy. Well, at least temporarily. But sadly, that's the trade-off. It's temporary. Let's see. Temporary versus eternal. Non-brainer, perhaps? Sometimes, though, it's just a lack of direction. Confusion reigns because they don't know and they don't realize that someone is there to guide them. And believe it or not, that someone is even wiser than even number one. One thought would strike me every year on the way of the confirmation no matter where camp was. I can't help but think that it's that some parent who's driving a camper up or a couple of campers up must be hearing those four dreaded words. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Maybe the parents ponder the same questions themselves. After all, you know, I'll just pick on speculator for a moment. Uh, speculator or other places in the Southern Adirondacks are usually mentioned by meteorologists on the local TV stations. So the place sounds like it's local. Still, you've been driving for a while and you hope to see a sign as to how far away speculator still is. But then, as you're driving up Route 30, Another New York State route joins it for about a dozen miles or so 
until they get to the village of speculating. And now you see this double root sign. North 30, South 8. What? So which way are you headed? North, South, East, West? Hmm. Which way are you headed? Which way are you headed? I'm not talking about driving down any road, but rather more importantly, what about your life? What about your future? Indeed, where are you then? Who or what are you relying on to get there? Good question. But do you have a good answer? Well, if things seem to be going well, or at least reasonably well, one can just stick to the status quo and not make any course corrections, right? Well, in today's gospel reading, Jesus asks those who want to follow him, which way are you heading? And what are you doing? Or are you willing to do to get there? It's still a very valid question for each one of us today. Christ offers the invitation to follow him, but just what does it take to follow Jesus? Does going to church on Sunday or when it's convenient for us count? First thing you need to remember is not to try to keep a personal scorecard. God takes care of that. Rather, we need to ask ourselves a couple of more important questions like, what stops us from following Jesus? Oh, here's a better one. What takes priority in our lives? And how does that help or hinder us in our following Jesus? What do we need to let go to be able to follow? Those were all questions basically asked in today's Gospel reading in a different way. That gospel reading today, that seems to fly in the face of what one might expect. After all, James and John, those infamous sons of thunder, want to cast down fire and destroy the Samaritans for not receiving them in Jesus the way they thought they should be received. Oh, Jimmy and Johnny. Or even Jesus telling two different would-be disciples that following him will not be an easy task. Stop putting things in the way. Come, follow me. Don't follow other things. In the message version of today's gospel passage, we hear how on the road someone asked him if he could go along. I'll go with you wherever, he said. Jesus was curt. Are you ready to rough it? We're not staying in the best inns, you know. But how's this? Or Jesus basically instructing the other would-be disciple that there is no excuse for excuses. I like that. No excuse for excuses. Because it all comes down to if you really, really, really want to follow Jesus, then following Jesus must be the primary motivator in your life. Kind of makes sense. After all, don't you recall what Jesus said was the greatest commandment? Matthew 22, verse 37, when Jesus states unequivocally, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The Reverend Dr. David Lowe sums up today's initially somewhat perplexing gospel reading from Luke this way. He says, quote, Think about it. Jesus is on the way to Jerusalem. There he will be falsely accused, 
unjustly tried, cruelly treated, and brutally executed. Of all the evangelists, Luke in particular stresses Jesus' profound innocence and the rank injustice of what happens to him. Which means that Jesus' response to the chaos, limitation, and vulnerability of this world is not to deny it, or try to control it, or defeat it, but rather to embrace it, even to the point of death. And in response to this one, who does not deny or control, or does not wreak down violence or vengeance upon his enemies, who does not need to take matters into his own hands, but relies on God to the end in response to all this. God raises Jesus from the dead, showing that, or showing us that there is another way. We do not need to return hate for hate. We do not need to resort to violence out of fear. We do not need to control those around us to flourish. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it's not hard to see. And it's not hard to ignore all the hate and violence that has plagued our country for the past several years. Even for the past several weeks. The illogic of an attitude of I'm right, so therefore, you must be wrong. But it all comes back to the questions, where are we headed? Individually or as Christians? And who or what is going to be guiding us? Or, oh, here, life is full of horrors. Or are we simply satisfied with the complacency of status quo and disinterested in change even when it's a change for the better. Christianity is not stagnant. It never was and it never should be any kind of passive thing like that. And maybe this would be a great spot to put in a plug for requesting that you fill out one of those questionnaires from Pastor Jeff regarding the future hopes and goals of Gilead Lutheran Church that John mentioned before the service. But here's the thing. When it comes to what we believe and what we need to do, we must be driven by the Spirit. P.S. We are not the Spirit. The Spirit may be in us, but we have to be guided by that Holy Spirit. That advice that we heard directed to the Galatians is directed to us as well. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Well, I know what's best for me. Really? Let the Holy Spirit do it. Here's another thing from the, the readings today. The psalmist prays to the Lord that, that the Lord will show me the path that leads to life. So what is the path that you're on? Is there any kind of course correction that is necessary? Up at confirmation camp, not unlike life itself, until you walk the full length of a path for the first time, you really don't know where it ends, or even what you're going to face along the way. On those paths there, chances are that there's a few mosquitoes ready to greet you and hug you as only hungry mosquitoes can. Just like all the things in life that make traveling the path of life sometimes irritating, sometimes painful. Still, we strive to get to the end of the path. And yes, we have been known to ask ourselves, are we there yet? Despite our uncertainty, we keep moving forward. And we can keep going forward, no matter what kind of negativity or rough times we are facing in our lives. 
And that is what Jesus is basically asking each of us to do as followers. And to pray, place our trust in Him with no excuses, no matter what. Indeed, you, Lord, are all I have, and you will give me all I need. The future is in your hands. So the big question is not, are we there yet? But rather, are you willing to let go and let God above everything else? For you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Definitely something to think about. Definitely something to pray about. And definitely something to do something about. After all, as baptized followers of Christ, it's all up to each one of us to decide what our number one priority truly is. What's yours? Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 434 in the Green Book, the Son of God, our Christ.
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. United in Christ and guided by that Spirit, we pray for the Church, the creation, and all in need. I will end each petition with God of grace. Please respond with, hear our prayer. God of faithfulness, set the face of your church firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of grace, God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of love, attend to those who are struggling with mental health issues, including depression or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work toward health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of peace, guide all who govern that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or conflict, especially those affected by the Russian invasion of the Ukraine. God of grace, God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick, whether of mind, body, or spirit, especially those listed in our bulletin, as well as those who are in our thoughts at this moment. Uphold those who are unemployed, underemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their hands. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all understanding and ever-present love, you come to us in empathy, accompany all who are lonely, and for those dealing with addictions of any kind as well as those who find themselves in abusive relationships through no fault of their own, and for all those feeling abandoned in any way, and remind all of them of your abiding presence, accompany all who are persecuted and exploited, and open our ears to their cries. God of grace, all-knowing God, we now lift up to you in silence those hopes and concerns the joys and sorrows that you alone can see written upon our hearts at this moment. God of grace, God of joy, we give thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you. Keep their examples of faithfulness always before us. God of grace. Amen. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. And while we prepare ourselves for Holy Communion, and as your offering is brought forward, we thank you for your ongoing support.
us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The
dear guest at Jesus' request. stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace.
in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now as you go from this place, go knowing that you are saved by grace. You are justified. You are forgiven. You are sought out, beloved, hidden in Christ, and made for the glory of God. You are known. You are never, ever forsaken. You are held in the palm of God's hand. You are so loved. May the peace and power of our God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds of Christ Jesus, not just this day, but every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.